recovering the charge on an old Nordine unit, Westinghouse brand. I'm taking a fan motor leads off, and a, they're a little bit different colors. I want to remember that blue is our fan start. We have an orange coming down here. That is our common. have our black, which is coming over, shouldn't go to the defrost controller, and it does down here. That's just for my benefit, guys, so I can remember. If we look down inside the unit, we can see we have our accumulator and a giant anthill. You can see it down there, guys. We're going to remove the accumulator and replace it because it's rotted out on the bottom because it's been sitting in soil and ants and crap for quite a while. We're going to take that out. We're also going to replace the evaporator on the inside because it is leaking as well. Here's our Nordine air handler, Westinghouse. Westinghouse is fancy for Nordine or Nortec or whatever shit it's called now. Over there you can see our drain. It goes down, down, and up. Maybe we can fix that, see if we have enough fall. Maybe. Looks like it might not. We're going to take the screws out, take a look at this copper right here. So we need to take this thing out. This is our evaporator. You can see it looks kind of beat. The panels are all rusted out. Can't remember where I found a leak on this thing because I found it last year. Now the TXV will reuse. Unless the new one comes with a piston and then we won't. Nice. Alright guys, of course the replacement. This is Nordice will be Micro Channel. Micro Channel. Beautiful. Here's our Micro Channel coil. All of her glory. It's a single pass coil, so one line goes in, travels throughout the coil, and one line comes out. There's no manifold with different branch circuits, it's just one pass through. Very interesting. Interesting micro channel. But it does have an orifice in it, so that's what we're using. Our recovery is all finished, so I'm going to cut these lines off right here, and there's Plenty of play in them because they run off to the side and run down. Sort of dumbass like, but but luckily dumbass is random, so there's plenty of play. So I'll cut it off here, take the drain fitting out, or shit, just leave it there. Because I'm pretty sure we, we have to reuse the old coil pan on the bottom. We'll pull everything out, put the new one in there, micro channel and all, and get ready to fit everything back up. Guys, what I do is I clean off a section of copper. On both sides that I'm going to use that way when I cut it off it'll be ready to braze back you see on the bottom we got ourselves a three-quarter to seven-eighths custom fitting right there Bo but you can make fun of people saying why do you do that for but for real you could get like a piece of seven-eighths copper then just swage into it a piece of three-quarters and you'd be done so I don't really get that there's our brand new evaporator micro channel greatness we have our wonderful piston our two lines coming out the bottom look like they're sort of where the other lines were almost fantastic so I'm going to go ahead and fit this thing back up so I can braze it in and then I'll move outside dear previous installer your brazing is so shitty that we can't even get the panel off because your turds on the bottom of the joint thank you previous installer guys since I have a three-quarter line coming in and a 7 8 line over here. I will take my 3 quarter swage, put it in the line here, and flare it out enough so it'll be a tighter fit going into that 7 8 bell. I put the two lines together now. I put the 3 quarter swage in here, flared it all the way out as far as it would go. It's still loose, so I put in the 7 8 knowing that copper, larger size copper residential, 3 quarter, 3 8 you can expand it a little bit more than. 3 8 3 8 sometimes tears and rips. If I have a little tear on the side here, which I'll fill with solder, but we're able to expand it out enough where it makes a lot closer fit right there. I'm going to go turn on the nitrogen, then I'll braze these two up, and then I'll head back out so I can change that accumulator. I used to have long hairs to sing in a rock cage, stay out all night long. I used to drink myself silly, go driving for hours, but now I'm Guys, 
guys I'm going to go cut off the service valves pressurize this line set and coil make sure we have no leaks and I'll move on to the accumulator I'm going to go ahead and pressurize because I have all my stuff down here and if I were to let it go to the very end then I have to bring it all back down here it's kind of a pain in the ass so I figure I'll go ahead and do it now I have 110 pounds of pressure on the coil and the two joints there's no sound typically if I make a mistake brazing it's very audible so no leaks here maybe some leaks here eventually up in this region or here or maybe here but not right here I am all done in the crawl space I have a new trap in there the drain runs downhill except for a small section where they drilled the hole at this angle outside sort of slopes back up a little bit I'm not drilling a new hole but I made the best of what I got I have a dryer for the outside but uh unit actually doesn't have a dryer right now so we'll be putting in its first dryer after uh, eight years put about 110 pounds of pressure on the system we're holding right there it's been about 30 45 minutes since i did that so i'm pretty satisfied i'm just gonna leave it on there while i'm working the other half of the system on the inside of the condenser got my two pipes going to the accumulator cleaned off i'm gonna cut it out unscrew it and we'll either fabricate new pipes or sweat the old ones out of the accumulator guys most of the debris is out of the way now Clean that with the old shot vac. You see right here where the accumulator threads on. And I was, you know, always looking for confirmation that I did the right thing or found the leak. And right underneath there, you see that darkened spot? It's where the dirt had oil in it. So, very satisfied with that. So, I'm going to put my new accumulator in there. And we'll start fitting up the pipes to it. Guys, I have the accumulator all fitted up. I bent the piece for the line going to the compressor there, as you can see. And the other one over here is just a street elbow. It was just kind of, it was perfect for mating up with that existing copper. So I'm just going to braze them in place because it's pretty accessible down there. I just have to kind of lean over the top of the unit here. But what else is new? So we'll go ahead and braze those up. I'll turn the nitrogen on and I'll show you when I'm done. We'll have my pressure test on, guys. The old accumulator is all welded up and looking beautiful. No leaks there, but wait. Service valve leaks on this Nord 9. Fantastic. Let's see. Great. Shall we say frustration? Guys, as you see, I come prepared. These are my standard. I bring these with me just in case a service valve is leaking. It's a ball valve, just like this one. As you see, our installers have done a bang up job of installing this. It's overheating here will cause leaking here but that's all right whatever i'll fix it we have our mounting bracket on the bottom of the ball valve i'm going to put it right down here see there's two mounting holes i'll put it right there and screw it in fit it up we'll go ahead and braze that back up so we won't have a leaky valve ball valve in place also our new dryer voila looks better than what was there to begin with and with the mounting bracket, it looks pretty good. It looks like it was designed to be there. Pressure test on the system again, just to check all of our, our new repair that we didn't know about, and a dryer. So far, it's holding. So after this, we'll put everything back together, put the system in a vacuum. I reattached my fan leads back to the capacitor with the aid of the video that I made at the beginning of this video. Reattached the low voltage and the high voltage because I took them apart so I could set this bottom half of the access to the service valves away from the unit and I had to disconnect the power to do that. So everything's tidied up. I'm going to haul a load of gear back to the truck and then I'm going to come back with the vacuum pump and start that process. Got the vacuum running. A couple of few more minutes for it. 520. Then we can charge the system up and we'll be done for the day. The DAFM3 out now. We have three 16 by 16 returns in this house. I'm going to go ahead and get an airflow reading. I just turned the air handler on so I can go ahead and have that ready for the eye connect when I start the unit up.
that time came out to about 1150 it's a little bit lower than we'd like to have it one of the returns there were five returns that were 16 by 16 I was wrong but one of them actually had zero airflow so there might be an issue with the length of run something we can do about that but not today 248 ounces of charge in this unit so we have quite a bit of R22 here to put in so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that and catch up with you guys once it's run. We got just under seven pounds in the machine weighing it in in liquid in the liquid line. I switched it over to the suction line. I'm gonna put my low pressure probe here, high pressure probe on the liquid line. Start things up and I'll go put the air probes inside. All right guys I just started things up and obviously we're very low in refrigerant so I'm gonna add some. Once I add a little bit of refrigerant, I'll go uh, put my air probes in. As we look down at the screen here, our pressures are right on the money as far as suction pressure. Target superheat's right in the ballpark. You see 8.7, 8.9, 11.3 target superheat. Our head pressure is a little bit lower than the target. So you look at this, you say, well, we're doing pretty good. Then you come up here and you see 12 pounds, 10 ounces. Now the factory charge for this unit is 15 pounds. There's no way we're gonna make it to that charge. And my theory behind this, you guys chime in, that because we switched from a tube and fin coil to a microchannel evaporator, we're no longer needing the same amount of refrigerant. That sounds nice until we get to winter time and we have to see how the microchannel will respond to a heating cycle. So I'm just curious. Obviously the coil doesn't hold as much as far as volume but that's three pounds, or two pounds different right there, right off the bat. So, very curious. We got it sorted out in AC for today. Even saved some R22. I didn't know I had to I'd get to keep, so that's nice. Compressor's running at 11 amps. I actually think that's a little bit high for today, but oh well. Another one's in the books. I'm gonna break down my stuff here in a minute. Let's take a look at the, the line scorecard here 20 degrees split 32,000 BTUs 2.73 tons 2.73 tons so the fact that we had really cruddy airflow really plays a big part in that because this is a three and a half ton machine so we're still 1150 CFM and to think I increased the blower speed from low when I got here to high before I did that test so imagine what it was before very cold on the coil so see our super heat's kind of diving down right there a little bit so we'll see micro channel i blame the micro channel because it's evil <laughs> 